Welcome back to World Drum Club, everyone. My name is Kalani Das, and I'm your host and teacher here on the channel. Some of you are asking me to do some looper basics. So that's what this lesson is about. I'm actually just using the looper. No drumming, except vocal stuff. We'll do some body percussion, just to demonstrate. And I want to say right away that I am not an expert at using the Boss RC505 loop station. If you're looking for that, click away. <laughs> Click away now. This is for people who really know almost nothing about loopers and want to just have an introduction um, in a really basic way. So that's what we're going to do here. So I've got this set up and you can see the overhead view, right? And this is the Boss RC505 loop station. And it has a lot of buttons and knobs and doodads on it. Um, so I want to make this really, really simple and give you just the most basic uh, starting point right now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to focus on one of these tracks, these channels here, because this loop station has five tracks or five different buckets, if you will, or places that you can put loops, and they're all the same. So if you, if you can use one, then you just replicate that and you can use more, you know, and add that. But right now we're just going to focus on this first one here and we're going to look at how to record a basic track. Um, there's a couple things involved. One is the record level up here. So if I turn this on right now, you're only hearing my overhead shotgun mic, but if I turn this on, you'll start to hear the loop station mic, which is here. So this mic is plugged into the loop station. Now I'm, I'm recording or I'm accessing this microphone. Um, when, I, when I switch or if I'm picking up instruments or I'm doing something in between recording, I'll turn this volume down so I don't record that sound. Um, the other thing is over here, which I have a, um, you can see this light right here. I've got a metronome sound that I'm also sending out to the output. Uh, that's this sound. And I can change that sound. There's settings in here to change the metronome sound. I could change it to a beat or just a simple click or whatever. Right now it's pretty basic, um, but you can record on this unit. You have a choice of lots of different um, click tracks and they can be in different meters, different feels. There's even some shuffle beats, but that's, you know, again, that's getting into another layer of uh, skill and complexity. So what I've got set up right now is the click at a certain tempo and I can start, I can hit record over here. This is our record button and stop. So you see this one is got the play slash record. And then this is a stop button. So let's look at what that looks like. So when I hit play uh, or, or record, it's going to go into record mode and it's going to give me four beats as a count off or what we call four beats up front before it actually starts recording. So let's look at that. And then I've also got this set up to record four bars or four measures. A measure is four beats in this case. So that's 16 beats. I'm going to count it right now so you can see exactly what that is. So we're going to have four beats for, uh, for nothing. Then it's going to start recording. Uh, and when it reaches the end of four bars, it's going to go into overdub mode and it's going to turn yellow. It's going to go from red to yellow. So let's look for that. And I'm going to count the beats off. Oh. First, I'm going to erase what's in there because uh, there's already sounds in here. So if I hold and press this stop button over here, uh, it'll 
it'll clear it if I hold it for two seconds. All right, so let's start again. We're gonna have the click and um, go into recording. One, two, three, four, two, two. And this is why I am not a professional because I didn't have the mic turned up. And this is the kind of stuff that happens when you um, start messing around with loopers, you forget stuff. So here we go, let's turn the volume up. There we go. Now this mic is on, let's, let's do that again. I'm glad I'm doing this because this is the kind of stuff that happens. Just real. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two. And notice two, how this four, is yellow. Four, two, so three, four, that means one, it's in overdub two, mode. So three, I can just four, two, turn up the mic two, volume and three, overdub something. Four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, and a two, two and a three, three four. Two and a two, three and a four three, and a one four, and a three two three four four and a four, one two two three three four whoop. one and a two, two and a three, three four two and a two, three and a four three, and a one four, and a three two three four four and a four, one and that track two, kind of two, doesn't three, make sense three, so whoop. one and a two, two and a three, three four and I can stop it over here I can start it again one and a two, two and a three. three one and a two, two and a three. three. All right, and it'll always start from the beginning. Um, that's the basics of looping right there. And then we're just layering. Now, let me add one little uh, bonus to this. This is, again, very simple. Um, I can stop the click if I want uh, after, let's say, I, I lay down my first track and then I don't want to hear the click. Um, I can stop it. I also have an option in this unit to send the click to the output so that people listening, it's called line out. I can send it to the output of the device so it would actually go to speakers or headphones like it is now going to the recorder. Or I can have it set so only I hear the click and then everything else is going out, right? So just the music I'm making is going out while only I hear the click. That's usually how you would set it up for live. Uh, uh, looping or performing, right? You don't want your audience hearing ding, ding, ding. Um, but you would want to hear that. So I'm going to erase this first one by holding this down and this will flash and then it tells me it's erased. Um, I'm going to play around a little bit now with this knob here and let me turn the volume up so you can hear. Now I've got some input effects. This is input effects and I've got different types. This one is a reverb on A. I've got three effects, but we're just gonna use one right now. And if I wanna add some reverb, I can turn this knob up during the recording at any point, and it adds this reverb effect. And I can turn this down, and now it's dry, right? So I have the option of adding effects. I can add them to the recorded um, parts going into the unit and then they're printed, they're recorded, the effects, is, the effects are recorded onto the track. And I can also add track effects over here, which I'm not gonna do right now, but you just have the option, these are the kinds of things that you can control. So I can choose different effects, I can add different amounts of the effects, either on the input or on the output. So if I wanna record dry and then add reverb after, I could do that. Uh, or I could add reverb going in. And this is what I did on some of my recordings where I recorded certain instruments, like percussive instruments with very little reverb. And then I recorded some other things like native flute uh, with a lot of reverb because that just is how I wanted it to sound. So I'll give you a, a little sample of that, how I would record some without reverb, something with reverb, mix them together. Uh, and then of course the record level here determines the balance within a track. Right, with everything in this, think of this as one bucket here, um, and then I can replicate that moving sideways using the different, you know, multiple buckets here for recordings, and then I can balance all the levels of all the things that I've, I've recorded. But right now, super basic, we're just going to use one of these channels. So I'm going to record something simple 
percussive, and then I'm going to record something else with a little bit of reverb, um, and we'll see what happens. So this is cleared. My mic is on. Let's go. So one of the issues that we have when we record, when we do looping, and I experienced it right there, is that once something is in there, you can't change the volume relative to the other parts. And that's where having multiple channels really comes in handy and why I like this particular unit um, for what I do, which is re using different instruments and having different sounds and then wanting to balance that all out and mix it in real time. So in that last example, you know, the vocals were kind of loud compared to the percussion and I couldn't change that. So um, if I was able to put, or if I had put the percussion on one track, for example, and then the vocals on another track, I could easily balance them. I could take the percussion out, I could just have the vocals and vice versa. So that's why it's nice to have something that has multiple tracks that you can balance separately. But like I said, all these tracks are the same, all of these uh, different, these five different channels or, or loopers, really it's five loopers that are connected. These are all the same, so we don't need to go down the row and play with them. Um, in future videos, you'll see me doing that and I'll maybe what I'll do is have the overhead on this uh, entire looper and kind of feature this maybe in the background and then you could see exactly how I'm using it. But that gives you the basics. Um, most loopers have similar features like a click track, input volume, uh, output volume, ability to loop. Basically, and you can loop infinite tracks. That's another question is how many loops can you make? And it just depends on your internal memory, how much memory does your looper have. But most loopers are going to be capable of looping way more tracks than you're ever going to probably want. And you have to remember too that it's cumulative, so every time you add something, you're adding sound, but you're also adding some background noise. You're adding, if your mic and your equipment has a little bit of hiss in it, which most do, uh, you're gonna be adding that, and that's gonna be accumulating over time. Uh, looping technology has come a long way since it started. My brother has a, a actual tape loop called an Echoplex, which is a, um, an, an infinite, an infinity loop. <laughs> Um, it actually had this piece of tape in there that would go around in this sort of circle and you would record and, and it, would, it would play back and you could record um, additional things on this tape, physical piece of tape. Now, of course, we're using chips and everything. It's a lot cleaner. Uh, a lot of possibilities here. This thing has, has a USB, so you can record it direct into a, a computer, for example. You can also play back from a computer into this and play on that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you can record loops, download them. You can have loops in your computer, upload them into here, and then loop on top of there. You can do a lot of things with these loopers. So whether it's one like this or just a simple single channel looper, uh, you can you know have a lot of fun with them. 
Um, but that being said, I do want to say that looping itself is a skill and you want to spend time learning your particular looper. There's lots and lots of videos, especially on YouTube, of course, tons of videos on this model, the Boss RC505 loop station. It's been out a few years. Um, you can get pretty good deals on them uh, used, which I did with this. This was used. And um, yeah, I hope that's helpful. As we move into the future, I'll um, do more with the loop station and I'll show you all what I'm doing as I use it. All right, if you like this, please like it with your thumb, click on the thumb guy, uh, hit the bell so you don't miss any future notifications of new videos. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm Kalani, this is World Drum Club. Thanks for watching.